Hey guys, thanks for checking in. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Cardo Freecom 4 Plus. And what I've had up until now is the BT Interphone V6. I just want to discuss a few things that I think are great about the Cardo Freecom. And the question I really want to ask is, is it worth it? Hey Cardo, play intro. So I purchased the Kaido Freecom 4 Plus as a dual pack, uh, just because it works out to be a bit cheaper. And the person that I normally ride with is my cousin Mick. And this is what happened when we got together to unbox and install the unit. Phone, need a drink. <coughs> Makeup. Makeup. Lights. Oh, what's those lights? Okay, cool. <sighs> Finally, super pumped to be checking out the Cardo Freecom 4. Are we excited? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So, uh, Mick and I, this is my cousin Mick. We're sort of cousins, right? Yeah, we're uh, more cousins. cousins. Oh. By, by marriage, but, but, be, by marriage. but better friends. Are we? Are we? <laughs> we could be. We've been using the cheaper version of this uh, type of system up until now. With the, ooh, oh my goodness, nice. it's shiny. You did most of the research on this. Everyone knows about Senna, and these are often, these are sort of in a similar price bracket. Is that fair to uh, say? Very, a little bit cheaper? Yeah, very similar price bracket. Mm. I think they've been around for, for just as long. They, they, uh, they tend to have the same sort of level of technology. We bought this as a duo pack, hence this two in there, because we ride and talk basically together and it was more economical than buying them singularly. Yeah. Um, and the Freecom 4 Plus, the reason I sort of went with that one is it, it gives you a lot of the technology that came with the higher end unit, such as the, the push to talk, uh, the, the voice activation, so you can say, hey, Cardo, and, and it, it automatically also adjusts to the ambient noise level. So when you pull up at the lights, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that's the difference. Like that's what uh, the center does. And I was always against having audio in your helmet. I always saw it as a bit of a purist. I kind of saw it as another distraction. But if you think about the times where we've been riding and we've been able to give each other heads up, warnings, uh, or just say, "Look, I gotta pull over." It's usually Mick going to the toilet. Very small. <laughs> <part up. laughs> but also just you know. Since um, <laughs> <laughs> road hazards. Road hazards. Remember that time I said, wait, leaves on the road. Yeah. You almost still came off, but I reckon I, I play that back in my mind a lot, and I don't know what would have happened. I enjoy the ability to talk when you want to talk. These ones you can just say, hey, you know, we ride together enough, and when he goes, hey, stop talking to me, stop singing at me, <laughs> your jokes are, sh are terrible. <laughs> Um, I'm switching off, I just need to you know what? It's Do you know what, it's more with the old system, and I'm hoping this is going to be better, is that I, I'm kind of straining to hear you, um, and it's more that I, like, I'm trying to sort of concentrate on trying to hear you than, than what you're saying. It's that I just can't hear you properly, so it's actually almost a distraction at those higher speeds. But what else is in the box? So look, feel the, the, the lightweight. I like, yeah, it's very slim design. And what I also like about it, and what um, had me over the center is the ease of the scrolly wheel. And this simply has very large feelable toggles, three of, and yeah. the scrolling One. wheel. So over and above the voice recognition. I have read some reviews that sometimes the voice recognition isn't easy to pick up. Mm. We've tested it out. Let's oh, find out what's underneath the, the official sticker. Oh, there's only one. Oh. Surely there could be two. One sticker. Oh, mate, fail. Oh, That's it, send it back. They get, at least they give you two manuals. That's always handy for someone else to read. <laughs> Don't really read the manuals. Yeah, we might need to. Uh, it tells you how to make it. Work. Oh right. <laughs> oh, that's this, one this, of the other reviews. Uh, the thing that said, I think you're about to say it yourself, that it's really easy to connect. So that's going to be interesting to check because with the with the other one, well, you know, I noticed the BT interphone. I think it's just a generic device. It was a little bit cryptic to mm. set it up the first time. Yeah, we had a couple so. of times where we were actually, it took us like 15, 20 minutes to, to try and connect it. it. Yeah. And then that's holding everybody up. And we were riding in a large group that day and it was a little bit like, everyone yeah. was like, come on, we've got to get going. Yeah. So. Delving into the mystery black box here. 
Seems to have every. Mmm, smells nice. Oh, <laughs> still fresh. Smells like gin. Ooh, wow. You smell it, yeah? yeah? I smell, I reckon that smells like gin. Anyway. It smells like gin. <laughs> Some well, of that's a good thing. Well, that's a problem. Thing. So, again, it comes with a choice of more rigid type microphone. Yeah, or, or the one you can stick on by the looks of things. Yes. Loose wide uh, microphone that can be easily adapted. So, open face helmets. Yeah. Or even internally in your helmet. Sometimes these ones are a little bit better if you've got yeah. some more room. So, 3M adhesive pads. You've got the, the clip. Oh, so these are the speakers. See, oh, they've got a bit more, much more weight to them yeah. than the ones on the other unit. My new helmet. I needed the new helmet to fit the uh, the new mm. headset. They they do feel a lot weightier. Mm. They do feel a lot more substantial. You yes. have, have USB standard type charging cord. The base unit here looks like an interesting clip arrangement onto the side of your helmet. Well, I had to on my old system i actually had to make my own clip out of a money clip because i kept i broke the plastic clip that it originally came with yes i have heard as well that it, it can pop out and fall because it, it's not sort of it's not vertically rebated against the against gravity so i think you have to really make a pretty concerted effort to hit that button yeah it seems to sort of lock in pretty well and Certainly a lot of options of what you need to do in, in... Oh, you've got a side mount thing. Okay, yeah. I haven't even got that yet. Fitting. Alcohol prep pad. Oh, that's what we need. If it smells like gin, maybe that's a gin <laughs> pad. <laughs> yeah. And... So it did take us a little while to get everything set up and installed. We had to run a firmware update for the units. It did require us to create an account and enter some of our personal details, which is fine. I'm hoping that kind of activates the warranty. I didn't really read it too much because I just wanted to get everything set up and working. So in terms of its overall functionality, the Cardo has very similar functionality as the BT Interphone on face value. The Interphone goes for around 50, 60 Australian dollars. The Kaido retails for around 300 to 350 Australian dollars. So there's significant price difference. At first, I'm gonna to have to be honest, I wasn't overly impressed with the performance of the Kaido. So yes, the audio is better. Obviously the speakers are much better. The drawback of that is that the speakers are thicker. And if your helmet doesn't actually have enough room for those speakers, you're gonna find that it's gonna be quite uncomfortable. And what I had to do is make a little bit of extra room and remove some of the padding behind those speaker wells in order to be able to actually wear the helmet comfortably. This is one of the major differences between the Cardo and the BT Interphone is that it comes with its own app. Now the app is pretty straightforward. It's really user friendly and I found that it worked really well. My phone picked up the Cardo unit really quickly and we didn't have a problem with that. So for example, we turn that on, press and hold that. And she says hello, little blue light flashes. I've obviously already set that up. And that's basically how long it takes to connect your phone to the unit. And it's just uh, told me that it's connected via audio. So that's quite a nice touch. If you've already got the helmet on and you wanna make sure that it's actually connected, you don't have to look at the side of the unit and see if the little blue light's flashing. You just know that it's connected. So that's what the app looks like. You have an option to use it as a phone. You have an option to set it up as the intercom system, which is when you were talking to other riders with the same unit, your music player, and your FM music. The beauty of this system is that it has voice activation. Is it worth paying $300 for that? And I think so. So what this means is that you don't have to take your hands off your controls in order to make adjustments. So you have that scroll wheel over there, which allows you to adjust the volume up and down click it upwards and that turns the music on and off. Hey Cardo, music on. Hey Cardo, volume up. Hey Cardo, radio on. <laughs> it 
whatever that radio station is, 107.5, is not a radio. I haven't used it for a radio. Hey, Kaido, music on. Music on. Hey, Kaido, mute audio. So there you go. What you have to do is you actually have to get to know the commands and once you've got your head around that, you're all ready to go. The other feature that I found quite beneficial is the Kaido's ability to adjust the volume as you take off and you have more wind noise or if you're pulling up to a set of lights, that volume will drop down which means you can hear a bit more what's going on around you. So those features alone I think are worth paying the extra money for. But having said that, if you just want a simple unit that's going to play voice commands for, say, you know, voice commands for GPS navigation and to make and receive calls, then I would definitely recommend, you know, one of those cheaper units. They look nice. They work well. They are water resistant. I've ridden with this one in the rain. I've had it for about three years. It's holding up pretty well. The battery life is fine. I've never had it run out. I've used it for a whole day's riding and then you know charge it overnight and then use it the next day. So the battery life on the Kaido on paper seems to be really impressive. And when I did test it out, so after a day's riding, it was still showing 80% of battery life. I quite like the way that looks sitting there on the helmet. It's a very sleek design. It's easy to get to take it off. You just, and easy to mount, you just clip it into place. Ricardo, battery status. Battery status. There you go. Volume up, volume down. Mute audio, unmute audio. You can go OK Google, set that up. Hey, Kaido, call intercom. What you can do is you can be riding along, listening to music, and if you want to call the person that you're connected to, you can just say, hey, Kaido, call intercom. Obviously, there's no one connected, but that will connect to that intercom, the other intercom rider, unavailable. So she's told you, she's tried. So all of that's quite handy. It's quite user-friendly. Hey, Kaido, speed dial. There we go. With this system, you've just got to learn how to make it work. Uh, and you can get it all to work for you. If you're one of those people that likes to use Google or Siri, you can set that up to work as well. So overall, in terms of its functionality, if it's something that you're going to be using on a daily basis and you want that functionality of being able to use those voice controls, you've got better audio with those speakers, definitely better audio. I'd say it's probably twice as loud. Definitely worth considering. With the cheaper unit, honestly, I wouldn't bother listening to music on them. I've tried it. You can barely hear it and the sound quality is not good enough to make it worth listening to music. So if that's important to you, I would seriously consider spending the money and getting something that actually is going to work properly for you. The other thing that really sets this unit apart from the cheaper models is that you can actually use your own headphones and plug them in to the unit. Value for money, still to be decided. Does it work? Does the voice command stuff work? Absolutely, works brilliantly. And I think that's worth spending that extra money. That simple design with that little jog wheel to adjust the volume and to start and stop. If you just hit that button, it just stops play. You can also use these buttons, one, two, three buttons. Super simple, super easy to use while you're riding. So definitely a better layout than the BT Interphone. You've got all of these buttons to try and work out and you've got to kind of feel your way along and go, okay, there's the first two, there's that next one, there's the volume buttons, and there's the call button, and there's another button that you only use if you're pairing it with more than one rider. And to be honest, that can be a little bit of a distraction. And any kind of distraction, in my opinion, is a risk. So guys, if you enjoyed that video, please remember, hit that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and as always, ride safe.